Welcome to Open BXRX on BronxNet. I'm your host, Sanjay Lopez, inviting you to get social with us at BronxNet TV on Instagram and Twitter and BronxNet Community Television on Facebook. Over the course of a year, thousands of Bronx sites have engaged in a participatory process to develop the Bronx People's Platform, seeking to create a collective vision for the Bronx that would unite organizing efforts across the entire borough. Joining us now to share more about the Bronx-wide platform are Catherine Meya of the Bronx Cooperative Development Initiative and Roberta Todd of the Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. So um, first to start, can you tell us about the Bronx Wide Platform and when and why it was created? Yeah, so as you said, the Bronx People's Platform for NYC um, was just released in January of this year. Um, and it's actually building on a few years worth of work. So back in the fall of 2019, the Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition and the Point CDC decided to um, anchor a Bronx Wide process, bringing in my organization, BCDI, and organizations from across the Bronx to really think about what it would look like to build a Bronx wide vision um, and platform. And at the time it was really grounded in um, the upcoming congressional elections. Um, so folks were going to uh, vote for who would be the next uh, Congress member representing the Bronx. And it felt like a really important moment to really think about what it would look like to come up with um, a shared vision and a, a community led platform uh, for systemic federal level priorities. Um, so that was released in uh, this, uh, the spring and summer of 2020. Um, and then given just all of the elections happening this year in New York City, so we're picking new city council members in the Bronx, we're gonna pick a new Bronx borough president. Uh, we're also going to elect a new mayor. Uh, it felt really important to translate um, that platform into a local level um, set of priorities. Um, and so similarly, we went through a community engagement process in the fall and winter of last year bringing in community members um, and other organizations to create the Bronx People's Platform for NYC. Thank you for sharing, Catherine. And as we know, the Bronx-wide platform has a list of demands and values, but folks in the Bronx may not be familiar with them yet. So can you just share what those are? Yeah, so the platform represents eight different systems. Um, so, you know, including uh, energy, housing and land use, criminal justice, education, immigration, uh, the electoral system, um, and maybe a few others that I missed there, but uh, really uh, representing, you know, a lot of the different pieces that, you know, impact our lives. Um, and across each of those systems, we came up with a set of policy priorities, mostly uh, really grounded in um, our shared vision for advancing racial justice and economic democracy, you know, which for us really is about ensuring that Bronx residents are um, owning and controlling and making decisions around things that happen in our communities um, and also a set of values and principles that Roberta can share. Um, and so for each of those systems, um, we have you know, a set of priorities. I'll share an example now um, just to give you a sense. So for housing, you know, we name really specifically that we need to ensure that you know, all Bronx sites and New Yorkers have access to you know, affordable, like truly affordable, and permanent uh, safe housing um, and have listed ways that we think we can move that uh, forward, including making sure that uh, we consider housing as a human right. Um, we talk about implementing development without displacement. So really ensuring again, that when we talk about development in our neighborhoods, that it's equitable, that it's benefiting the folks who live in the communities uh, currently. Um, and that uh, we also advance community and tenant ownership. So for us, um, a really critical piece of this is how we own the assets in our communities like housing, like land. Um, and so that's just a sense of, of what's happening in one system. Um, and again, we, we identify different priorities across the other seven um, collectively uh, to, to ensure that they're reflective of our values and principles. So maybe Roberta, you can talk through the values and principles piece. Sure. When you think about our um, values and principles and think about what Catherine was describing, what we do try to do is if we address everything from a systemic level, that means we focus on the root causes and inequalities that are working to transform the system. So if you think about how she's talking about having fair um, housing, housing ownership that fits into that. We talk about racial justice and putting people of color at the center of this work. And we must consider that in the fact that we are in the Bronx and we know that the Bronx is consists majority of people of color. 
And when we say that we apply an intergenerational lens to ensure all voices are reflected, I'm an example, I'm retired. We also have high school students that are sisters and brothers, and we have youth ministries for peace and injustice, and they also work alongside us when we discuss these issues. And we also apply a gender justice lens. That is to make sure that we center women and gender non-conforming conforming people that often are left at the margins. And this is very, all of these issues are very important. And we look at the environmental sustainability lens. And when we say that, we are considering it from the perspective of Bronxites, that from the perspective of pollution, for the need for more green, because we know that we need to take care of our planet and that that impacts our community's health. And these solutions need to be evaluated from that point perspective. So that means if we're talking about people coming in and building housing, we're gonna look at it from that perspective. And then finally, we talk about economic democracy and that's a framework for addressing the fact that, um, that, and we know the Bronx suffers from poverty and inequality. So we believe that it's important that we're sharing power and we, we're creating shared ownership and wealth in the Bronx for all Bronxites. So those um, summarize our values. Thank you, Catherine and Roberto for sharing those platform demands and values. Um, why was it important to include the entire Bronx community in this platform as opposed to just certain catchment areas in the Bronx? Well, well it's two things. The Bronx is very wide and it's a very, um, and people and power make a big difference in a coalition. So when we're talking about the Bronx, we want to make sure that everyone knows we're talking and trying to make it better for everyone here. So that's why we have a coalition of people from various areas, various interests, but we all can get together when we know that the most important focus is fighting to make Bronx and Bronxites equal and to have the rights that they should have because as our as we've been watching the economy, and I'm sorry to say, but when you consider what happened with COVID, we know that this is impacting all of us in the Bronx. Um, what's very important also is that we find that we have little groups and we're fighting one little war here and or another little war there, that's a fight back. But if we get together, we can get together and we can fight together with shared visions and strategies, and we can see that we're fighting forward, and together we can guide each other in terms of that movement. So that's why it's important that we work together so we can see the whole picture and make it better for the entire Bronx. Absolutely. And in preparation for today's actual special election day, um, today's March 23rd, uh, BWP has held a series of candidate forums. Can you tell us a little bit more about these events and how people can tune in and stay in touch? Well, when we've had, um, we've had two candidate forums because there are special elections for a district 11 and 15. And in those forums, when we hosted those forums, we had community people speak and ask questions. And most of the questions are along the basis of our platform. And we gave every candidate an opportunity to give an answer so that our community members can make good decisions. We have recorded all of these recording, all of these um, forums, and they can be found on the Northwest Bronx Facebook page. So um, Facebook Live, or, and so that's at Northwest Bronx Facebook Live or at Bronx Future. And these are very good starting points if you are still undecided today and you're going out to vote. If you just aren't sure, we ask you to go there because you can rank how you wanna vote based on the answers to some of the questions that reflect what community members in the Bronx have to ask. Absolutely. And um, what I've also noticed is that a lot of organizations are part of the BWP, as you've shared. Um, how many organizations have joined and how were they selected? 
Yeah, so um, the coalition, again, starting from the process that began back in the fall of 2019, has almost 30 organizations. And so those organizations that have endorsed the platforms have participated in various processes over the last few years. Um, and again, we encourage uh, organizations that haven't had a chance to take, you know, take a look at that platform. If you're aligned with our values and principles and those priorities, um, we're looking to really grow that uh, Bronx-wide coalition. Um, and then we have a core group, um, which is our leadership team. Um, and that's currently 12 organizations representing community-based organizations, um, faith institutions, and we also have labor at the table. Um, and the leadership team is really responsible for making decisions and thinking about the strategy of this work overall. And so I felt really important that the core really reflects um, organizations that are member led, that are grassroots and that really do a lot of work engaging residents on the ground. Um, and so those folks are at the table, both representing staff and then delegates like Roberta, who are you know, leaders in their community um, affiliated with those organizations. Um, and again, as Roberta said, right, we know the Bronx is a, a huge place, right? We have 1.5 million people. We're a very diverse place. Um, and so our goal with the coalition is to really ensure that the diversity of the Bronx is represented um, and also the diversity of like experience um, and expertise, right? We have these different systems. We know all of these systems are interconnected. Um, and so it's really valuable to have a space where folks can really bring the work that they've been doing around housing or energy or food um, into the conversation to make sure that that's reflected, um, but also to support um, us in really making those connections across those areas and really thinking about, you know, the systemic solutions that we need that are going to be cross cutting um, if they're going to be impactful. Right. Um, if someone is tuning in and, and wondering about future events, or is there anything else coming up for people to participate in? Yeah, so we have a lot coming up uh, in the next few months. Um, the kind of central place where you can find information is our link tree. So link tree uh, slash BX power. And so there you can just access links to upcoming events, make sure to register. Um, and then if you want to uh, fill out a form to get involved, um, that's also really helpful information for us. Um, and just on that note, we've been connecting uh, individual community members based on their zip code or their areas of interest to organizations that are part of the leadership team. So we wanna make sure that community members are connected to like organizing and, and kind of this broader movement through, through our organizations. Um, the other easy way is social media. So at Bronx Future or at Northwest Bronx are two easy starting points. Um, we're constantly posting flyers, uplifting the work of the other organizations. Uh, we tag folks, so that can, can also be an easy way to connect to the other organizations in our network. Um, and then specifically, uh, we still have a few more candidate forums coming up. So um, March 31st will be the next one at 6.30 p.m. And that's for uh, Council District 14. We're having forums in April for District 16 and 17. Um, we'll have one in May for Council District 18. And then in May and June, we'll also be hosting, uh, you know, the Bronx Borough President candidates and the mayoral candidates. So, you know, on that piece, there's ongoing work. Um, our partners are also hosting civic engagement activities, including workshops on ranked choice voting. So that's the new voting system. And again, you can you know, find all that information on the link tree. Um, and then uh, we're also kind of about to launch our next phase of the work. So creating a platform and identifying policy priorities was a you know, really important first step, but we know we need to really create a comprehensive plan for how we build a different uh, future for the Bronx and transform our economy. Um, so on April 9th at 5.30, we will be launching um, our Bronx-wide planning process. Um, so that will be op an opportunity to hear um, and connect to the next phase of our work. Ooh. And then lastly, <laughs> uh, just to connect, Northwest Bronx is hosting a, a health justice town hall on April 11th at 5 p.m. Um, and that is with other organizations, again, connecting to the health justice movement and really thinking about what it will take to uh, ensure that, you know, all of us have access to quality um, health care in our communities. Wow. Plenty of important work going on over at the Bronx Wide Platform. That is an understatement, you know, so thank you so much for, for sharing all the events and we'll be sure to share, to share those flyers on the screen as well. Um, thank you, Catherine and Roberto, for joining us today and sharing more about the Bronx Wide Platform. Yeah, thanks for having us, Sanji. Thanks. We'll be right back here on OpenBXRX. <laughs> 